Okay. All right. All right. Great. Thanks everyone for making it here tonight in our new format of, of Zoom meetings for everybody. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order at 547. Do you, Debbie, do you need to do a roll since you have all that or? Um, I still do. Okay. All right. Um, Clarice Ambler. Here. David Carroll. Here. Martin Gilmore. Here. Mark Hessling. Here. Julie Parker. Here. Leah Beth. Okay. Leah Beth Pohl. Here. Um, City Council Member Cheryl Wink. Here. And, um, staff, we have Christina Underhill. Here. Um, Library and Cultural Arts Manager Mark Miller. Here. Um, guest, we have Public Works Director Maria D'Andrea. Here. And myself, Debbie Severa. And we have MOA Representative Tim Baca. Sorry, Tim. Great. Great. Thanks, everybody. Um, so one of the things we have to do is uh, prove the minutes from the uh, March meeting because we did not have a quorum at our April meeting. So uh, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to look at those. And if so, we could, we've had a couple months, if anybody could give us a motion to accept and a second. Do we need to do that in chat, maybe? Uh, Can so we do that? Accept the, me the, meetings, the meeting notes. I'm sorry, Mark, I couldn't hear you. I move that we accept the meeting notes from the March meeting. Second. We, we got a second from Martin. So Mark made the motion. Martin seconded it. Um, all those in favor, I guess you raise your hand. Raise our hands. There we go. All those opposed. All right, let's remove Thank that you. open. So uh, we, we do have, uh, just to let everybody know, um, because of us, this process that we're going to, to approve the uh, artwork on both the uh, crosswalks and the cabinets, uh, I reached out to all of the um, supporting uh, organizations and individuals uh, that were, uh, part of um, the applications for them to see if they would like to listen in um, and attend. We do have one person, Kendall. Hey, Kendall. Um, so uh, we want to recognize any public comments. Uh, and if you have a public comment, are we asking someone to raise their hand? Is that how we're doing this? Correct. So Kendall, I don't know if you're want to say anything, if not, we'll just assume that you didn't raise your hand. You're okay with that? Okay. okay. So now I think we can move forward. So, uh, so this is a kind of a very exciting meeting for us, right? Uh, I think as far back as when Cheryl was uh, the um, chair of this commission, we were talking about uh, looking at trying to create some guidelines and moving forward with both uh, crosswalks and cabinets, uh, traffic box cabinets and how that might look. Um, we were very diligent and, and continued on and today uh, we are in a process of approving art. Uh, so what I thought I would do is just uh, since that time kind of go over the guidelines a little bit of um, or the timeline and then we'll go over the guidelines and then we'll look at four traffic boxes and one um, crosswalk. That sounds good to everybody. So Debbie's going to share the, the guidelines but uh, just to talk a little bit about that in on October 2019 uh, the guidelines were approved by City Council um, and these are part of them right there. That's page seven of the guidelines. It dealt with both crosswalks, uh, just marked crosswalks and artistic crosswalks. We then started working on an application. Uh, 
On, in April of this year, we put that application online in a test mode. And then uh, in May, we started submitting applications uh, using that online application portal. Um, from that, we had some feedback, both uh, Tim and myself had some feedback about the application. And I think we're getting that to a, a really good spot to where we could open that up. But so then what happens when that application gets submitted? Uh, the organization completes the application uh, indicating where they want the uh, artwork to be placed, whether it's a cabinet or a crosswalk. Uh, with that application comes support from businesses and neighbors. They have to, the applicant has to go out, as you guys know, to reach out to either local businesses or neighborhood groups and say, would you support this, this uh, artwork being placed on your corner or on your street? The site and the traffic box is approved by Public Works. And so that has happened on the four that we're gonna look at. They have uh, already approved both the traffic box and they've approved the site for our crosswalks, just to let you ever know, there are more in the queue that have not been approved yet, but we're at the point where those have been approved. And then the next step for us is to really approve the artwork. And what that means, and Debbie, if you could go just a little bit farther, what I thought I would down just a little bit where that yellow, so we can all see that yellow part. What that in part means for us is what we are approving is a couple of things. Um, one, this is part of the criteria that was provided to, uh, that was approved by city council. And that is, uh, I guess within the, specifically with the crosswalks, but works with the cabinets as well, except for the first one there. Um, the first one says that the artwork must be contained in the two traverse white lines. So that makes sense, obviously, with a crosswalk. We've all seen the crosswalks that have the white lines. The artwork has to be contained in there. Um, with the, with the uh, cabinets, uh, there is obviously no white lines that it has to be contained within. But that the artwork would not contain any white, yellow, or red. And I think that's in part, the second part of that sentence is the important part in which could be confused as con traffic control devices. So although the uh, artwork could contain white, yellow, or red in it somewhere, it just couldn't be confused. So as an example, you couldn't have artwork that has traffic or has a octagon of, of a stop sign in your artwork that may be confused as a stop sign, if that makes sense. The second thing that was important to everybody, I think on both sides, uh, was that we wouldn't have any logos, text or advertising uh, are allowed. Uh, I believe uh, we have one in the uh, group here that does have some text, but it will be incumbent upon us to make the recommendation of whether that vi we feel that that violates that design criteria. Um, and then again, the the kind of the last item that mits with the first item that I was talking about, that there would be no octagons, no triangles, or shapes that would be confused with traffic control devices. So we couldn't have an artwork on the cabinet that would be a, you know, a triangle that would look like a yield sign, basically. And then the third thing I think, or the, the also what we are here to do is as we look at these uh, guidelines to understand that we've asked the applicant to explain why they're important to that site and why they're important to that area. And so there's a little bit of that as well that we can determine. Does the artwork fit within the realm of that site it's gonna be placed in? Does it violate any of these? And then to that point, we'll take a vote on whether we recommend this moves forward. Um, as you know, we are a volunteer commission um, we are not going to be able to, I mean, we, what we are really doing is just recommending to the, to the city public works and everywhere that we believe it meets all the criteria and that it should move forward. Does that make any, any questions on any of that? All sounds good.
right? So with that, um, I don't know if we could look at 324640. Do you have, is that the first one there? Yep. So this is our first uh, traffic cabinet artistic wrap um, submitted by Tim. Uh, Tim, I don't know if you wanted to say anything about this, but we could maybe go down just a little bit farther to the meat and potatoes of this here. Um, proposed guidelines. So I think these three questions is what, if you haven't had a chance to look at that, uh, these are the probably the questions that will help us determine is the artwork appropriate for the site. So this is a design of, uh, if we're all familiar with uh, Alexander Aviation, uh, that used to be in the spot of, of where King Supers is. Um, so that's what this image is supposed to help represent. It does act for a gateway because it's going to be on our 3400 block. This is on broad northeast of South Broadway in Hampton. And what destinations are in the, in the block? Uh, we know the community, Colorado Community Bank, LTEP, Zomo, it's all within that kind of main business district and who will benefit. So I don't know if there's any questions on that. Those are the main ones for us to kind of determine, does this artwork really fit with what this is trying to do? And then if we go all the way down, I think, this is what the box looks like today. Pretty boring. And then go down to the, no. good. Oops. So just a little bit farther down depth. So right there. Oh, yep. Nope. You had it right there. So I don't know, Tim, do you want to speak to, or AJ, do you want to speak to this work at all? Um, I don't think AJ is going to be able to make the call after all. He might plan on later, but um, I don't really have anything other, other than, um, you know, we reference historical facts and periods of time in Inglewood to come up with all these. So that was his inspiration for this. Cool. So I guess at this point, is anybody has any comments or on any of this, this one, this guy here, we know where this, does everybody know where this is right on Broadway in Hampton basically? Yeah. Oh, Cheryl? Yeah, thanks, David. Uh, this is all fantastic. One question I didn't ask uh, a while back is um, clearly what we're looking at is cut to the dimensions of space of the traffic box. So I just want to confirm all of the traffic box will be covered then, you know, from even, yeah. I mean, what percentage are we covering? And sorry if we've talked about this a hundred times. Go ahead, Tim. Um, yeah, it's a uh, hundred percent of the metal surface of the box will be covered, including the battery uh, backup supply, which is attached to the side. So okay. you're just looking at the, the cutout template of what the vinyl would be printed out at or plotted out at. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, David. Mm -hmm. And and just so everybody knows as well, I mean, this being somewhat of a, a pilot of a test phase, um, you know, the installation step of this, if we approve all of these works, uh, well, then, you know, might have its own hiccups, but we'll work those out as we go along. So the intent, though, is, as Tim had suggested, that the entire box will be covered. So that's what we're hoping. So I don't know, is there anybody else that we feel pretty comfortable about? Anybody want to say anything? I'm looking for hands being raised. No? All right, so do we, I guess without that, if if um, we're ready to, does everybody want to just vote either yay or nay on, on moving this forward? Um, 
I don't know, Debbie, can you, can we take this by just a show of hands? That sure. make it into the minutes that way? Actually, if you can do it verbally, that would be great. Okay. So I, I will say, and then I don't, I mean, does everybody, Christina or Mark, you guys are okay too. You feel free to speak up and, and Maria, I think if I misrepresent anything, please tell me. No, no, no I appreciate it. I think we're, we're long for the ride here. It looks good. Okay. Love the colors. They're beautiful. Yeah, no, yeah, I think it's a great representation of it. I think that uh, without knowing the history, though, it might not represent what they're saying with the plane. You know, that just might be disembodied to somebody who's not aware of the history of Englewood, that's all. Sure. And, and I think that, that gives us an opportunity as well to talk about the significance of this work that we can go beyond just the work and really talk about, you know, us and maybe a partnership with Inglewood Historical Preservation Society is talk about that Alexander, uh, I forget the whole name, Tim, you know, Alexander Airline Company or Air, Alexander. Uh, aircraft Manufacturing Company. Air, aircraft Manufacturing. So obviously I have much to learn myself. So, so I will, I will start and say, yay, I'll give it a yes on this. Debbie, do we need to have a motion? Um, you know, you can just, I think for something like this, you could just say that you're in support of moving forward. Okay. Okay. So See if there's any opposition. If not, know that the commission supports in moving forward with this design. So Mark? Yeah, all in favor. That's great. Thumbs up. Leah Beth? Yep, I support it. Good. Cheryl, do you get to vote? I don't no? think so. Um, okay. Yeah. So, Martin? Uh, I'm in favor of moving forward. Clarice? Totally in favor. Okay. And then, Julie, next meeting you'll get to move. We'll get you to vote. So, all right. Thank you, guys. So, Debbie, if you can add the next one, uh, 324652. Yeah. Okay. So, this one again. Uh, I don't know if we, and, and Tim, if I'm right, I mean, we could, we could back up just a little bit, I suppose, on the artists. Each one of these are done by different artists, correct? Yes, we, well, originally before COVID, we had planned workshops with uh, Inglewood High School. Yeah. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do those. So we engaged our design and build alumni um, and actually commissioned these. So, you know, we were happy to be able to to support artists at this time for that uh, design. Great. And how do you say uh, Charbonneau? Is that Amanda Vela Charbonneau? Yes, and she grew up in Inglewood. Oh, well, great. So, um, again, I just, for the record, I, I, I'm not, uh, I realize you guys can read, but just for the record so we can get it out there. I'll just talk briefly about the history and what this is. So this design is inspired by the historic city ditch. Um, uh, I, I probably know less of that than maybe any of you. I don't, I'm not, but um, know a little bit about the city ditch. Um, it will be on uh, Broadway and Bates, again, within our central business district, uh, close to breakfast on Broadway, Trump Road Bakery, Kaladi Coffee, Panda Express, everybody kind of know where that is. Those are, so um, we can go down a little bit farther. Oh, what's that, Starbucks? I forget Starbucks, yeah. Yeah, it's right at the corner where Starbucks is. Okay. So there you go, the Starbucks even right there behind. So here's the design. Again, I, I think that uh, obviously it doesn't have any items that may be looked as traffic stops. I don't know, does anybody have any comments on this design that's relevant to that? Uh, Leah Beth? 
I like the design. Do we think that it's going to be pretty eye-catching with how busy it is that it might sidetrack people or is that just me? I, I like it too, but I think it is busy. I, I think it's really cool, but uh, it might be, I don't know if it's going to be distracting because the tones are, the color tones are kind of muted. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be, I mean, it's not that big. Uh, it's not, it seems like equally busy as the mural on the side uh, of Gerard and Broadway. True. Uh, true. True. I like it though. Yeah, I like it. I think it's I think it's really cool. I like it a lot. I just yeah, it's just it's got a lot going on. I hope that the vinyl will uh have that pattern come tr come through uh yeah. as clean as it as it's supposed to be. Yeah, that it'll represent that the I think it probably will. Yeah, that was my one concern as well. If you look at it like the way that everything lines up, it's so precise that any imperfections on the surface will definitely come through in the design and it'll certainly warp it. I'll just add real quick that all of these designs are um, vector based. So they are um, super clean lines. They're not gonna pixelate. They're not, um, I don't know if you know about imagery, but yeah, so they, they should be very clean and precise. Nice, good. Great, okay. And again, maybe maybe for us as well, um, this becomes a, a learning experience if after it's actually installed, if we get more in the future that seem to be, but um, it seems, I think what we're generally getting is a sense that this is something people would like to move forward with. Okay. If there's any other comments? If not, um, I'll go through again. So uh, on this one, I, I would vote to move forward. Mark? Yeah, I vote to move forward too. I think it's a neat pattern. Leah Bath? I vote to move forward. Martin? I vote to move forward. And uh, Tim, uh, Clarice? Yep, I vote to move forward. Great. I don't think I missed anybody that can't vote, right? Good. We're all good, Debbie, on that one. Great. You're so good. Next, Thank you. Great. So our next uh, cabinet is uh, 676 on the, again, uh, this artist is Chris Wosner. Is that right, Tim? Yes, she uh, just graduated from Inglewood High School last year and is currently attending Savannah College of Art and Design. Okay. So uh, this design uh, was inspired by Inglewood's history as Carnation City, if uh, you know. Um, at one point, we were the top producers of Carnations. Uh, again, it will be on uh, Broadway and Inglewood Parkway. So close to uh, One Barrel, King Supers, um, that corner over there, so we understand that. I think that's probably good there. So this is the one in front of One Barrel, as you know, a little beat up, but is not. One of the things I'll let you know is uh, that we public works, especially with these boxes, um, are uh, one of the things that they've shared with us that they need to verify is uh, I think some of them are, and Maria, if I'm wrong, tell me, are slightly old or could be updated. And so they are verifying that they are not scheduled to be updated so that we don't put the artwork on. And then two months later, they're like, sorry, we've got a new box for you. Um, we also uh, have asked for pictures in large part in case the box was uh, gives Public Works an opportunity to see if the box was slightly damaged, maybe a card bumped into it or something, and it might need to be fixed. 
if that's the case, then it probably wouldn't be great to be putting the artwork on a box that still needs to be fixed. So in these cases, they've given us the okay on these boxes. Um, again, this is obviously a carnation city. Uh, lots of carnations in there. Um, does anybody have any comments on this one? Are the bright red flowers that are kind of circular in shape, are those going to be a problem? Maria, could you no, answer that? I think this is fine. I think the overall representation is more of a round, you know, circular, um, but yet not defined circle is, is perfectly fine. Awesome, because I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I agree. Anyone else want to make any comments on this? I really like it. I like all the colors and uh, the detail of the flowers. I think it's great. Okay. Definitely an improvement over the uh, silver box. <laughs> right. All right. So if there's uh, no more comments, let me just make sure no one raised their hand. We'll vote to move this forward. So I would vote yes to move it forward. Uh, Mark? Sure, yes. Move forward, please. Leah Beth? I vote yes. Martin? Yes. And Clarice? I vote yes. Great. So we've moved those forward. And then uh, we have one more cabinet, 707. Um, so let's see here. Oh yeah. So this piece was based off the, uh, the Sherlin horse, horse cart, uh, that carried that we've seen the actual or replica in the, um, library, of course, um, carried passengers from 1892 to 1910. Um, so this again will be uh, in that central business district on Broadway and Dartmouth. And so this is closer to framed art, uh, Chick-fil-A, uh, the Walgreens over by that area. So everybody kind of familiar what we're talking about again. So we'll go down, we can see the, oh, I'm sorry, the artist's name, should we? Do you mind going back up, Debbie, and let me just say the artist's name, please? Uh, Natasha Vidger, is that pretty close? Okay, great. So we'll just go down. So again, the boring silver box. So, so this is that design. And so guys, this is the design that has a text on it. Um, and so uh, in part, you could argue that this violates our design criteria, but I might um, argue myself that it does not, um, violate that design criteria because the essence of what we were trying to get away from was uh, something that would say, um, you know, Chevron oil or um, Budweiser or, so, be it, you know, instead of getting, a, getting away from somebody that was using a logo and then putting just the company's name instead there. Um, we were trying to address all of those issues so that it wouldn't be but this seems to be historic, but that's just that, my opinion. This seems like a historic cultural significance thing, so. Or David, I think maybe the intent of the text was like lines of text, you know, that you had to stop and read or something. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I think we could, if you guys agree, feel comfortable moving this forward, even though it has text in it. No, I, I like that a lot. I think it's a cool design. Okay. Any other comments? 
Let's look at the, is there anybody raising their hand? I think we're good. Okay, so we'll take an, a vote on this one. Um, so I would vote to move this forward. Mark? Yes, I vote to move forward. Leah Beth? Uh, yep, I vote to approve. Martin? Yep, I vote to move forward. And Clarice? I vote to move forward. Great. All right, guys. So then the last one is the uh, crosswalks that started uh, maybe was the impetus of a lot of this when we were talking down there. Um, since Dana was the, the graphic designer that put that together for us, um, and as you know, our crosswalk is not as intricate as um, what the other artists provided. And I talked to Dana if he would act as the artist or graphic designer for us in meeting those needs. And he agreed to do that. So we've put him there. Um, the 34, and what we put on as our, our historic is that the 34 block, 40, 3400 block, sorry, has become the kind of our restaurant row of downtown Inglewood with new restaurants like Zomo and, and One Barrel and uh, uh, Gallo. So that this would highlight that area as or designate that area to pedestrians, so the value of the community, um, and then are not what we were suggesting is that it, this would be near, uh, you know, El Tap. It's really the crosswalk along El Tap to um, the bank community bank building. So it's on that side. It's on the west side of Broadway in Old Hampton. Just so you know where the the area is. And then if you can go down, this is the current crosswalk um, and the city, my understanding with part of our costs that we will uh, pay out of our budget is to have, if you could go down just a bit, Debbie. It's and not Maria, going any further. Oh, oh I'm yeah, sorry. Just that's as far as go, it goes. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, go, um, I guess up. I'm sorry, yep. So we can see the current crosswalk. So you'll notice on the current crosswalk, there are uh, white lines designating this crosswalk. That would need to be stripped out or um, Maria, you might, maybe there's a better word, but basically taken off and uh, reset up so that we could lay down the crosswalk that we are proposing. Um, that cost will be somewhere between 15 to 1600 to, you know, stop people from driving on that road while they tear that up and make that a little bit nicer for us. And then if we go down, what would replace this would be a crosswalk that would look like this with forks and spoons. Um, something that uh, has been obviously done in other cities. Um, I think Cheryl brought this up last time and she has her hand raised, so go ahead, Cheryl. Are you sure you, would you like to finish your statement? Well, just that um, this has been done in other cities um, and I think there was some concern at the point on uh, copyright um, and what that might entail. Right, thanks, David. Um, I, I did communicate with the, um, the attorneys, the city attorney's office and have been in the midst of a uh, quite an extensive back and forth conversation with um, <clears throat> Alex Dorotic about it and about whether or not we need um, to have any legal coverage um, for artwork that isn't original. Now, since that communication began, um, my hand was actually up to ask you a clarifying question about what you said earlier about Dana's role in this because since the conversation with Alex began, and since I've been looking at the existing um, fork and spoon designs elsewhere, I think one is in um, Saskatchewan and another somewhere in the United States that I've seen, obviously there may be more. Um, I've noticed that they're different. They're, you know, they are, yes, forks and spoons facing the opposing way, but there are slight design details that are different in those two and so I wanted you to clarify, if you would, um, David, whether or not this is 
absolutely something that Dana designed himself. So it is Dana's interpretation of what a fork and spoon uh, crosswalk would look like uh, the best, you know, to his, at his um, understanding and, and skill level and all of those things. So yes. So it okay. is his, it is his interpretation of it. Yeah. So I think with this design, then it's, I think we're, we're definitely in the clear legally because it's not an identical copy of anything. So if there were some concern, I'll keep on with that conversation for future considerations, but this should definitely move forward as is. Thanks for bringing that up. Great. Great. So um, any other comments on that? We're only, I mean, doing on our, on, we're only doing that on one side of the street, though. We're not doing it on the other side, right? Correct. And, and just to let you know, uh, Tim and his artists uh, have proposed a crosswalk on the other side. Oh, okay. Actually, um, we have not. Uh, I, well, I did get something from Guy um, yesterday. So um, I've been, obviously, like all of you, have a lot of other things. It wasn't pertinent to this, but I think that might have been approved on that. Okay, so yeah. that, I mean, just, you know, it'll, it'll look so much better than it just having it on one side is you know, my only thing, so. Yeah. Or having something on the other side, you know, to make it kind of completer. To that, to that end, uh, when, the, when I reached out to the businesses on that area and asked if they would support this crosswalk, um, they all loved it very much, but to your point, Mark, they, their comments back to me were, why only one? Why aren't you doing it on every, you know, every, block. every corner just on this, you know, why not uh, here and then across the street and then on the other side down by, I think it's Floyd, where yeah. one barrel would be, and then yeah. the, the old lighting store. Yeah. Why aren't That's you doing Gerard, all of those? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gerard. Uh, my response was in part um, budget for us a little bit. Um, That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I mean, because we, you know, we budgeted 7000 for this uh, crosswalk using that number that has been given to us by Denver, what Denver used to do. Um, so we were using that as, if it doesn't cost that much, if it costs half of that, then we could surely uh, allocate that money again for another one, possibly. Well, Cheryl? I think, the, I think the answer to that really is, is eventually we want to do more. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Cheryl? Thanks. And do you want me to lower my, oh, you're lowering my hand. Okay, thank you. Oh, um, so Chair Carroll, uh, did you by chance ask those businesses who want crosswalks everywhere to uh, donate some funds to the Cultural Arts Commission to pay for them? I mean, it's a great opportunity to get some money out of them to, if, if they really see that as a benefit to support our cause. Absolutely. I, I kind of, you know, I mean, I'm being a little yes. cute, but I'm really being serious. It could be a great way to raise some more money. I like, absolutely, you know, our budget allowed for this this year. This is an ongoing project, but, you know, would you care to donate $1,500 or whatever, something, something, yeah. another? So I can share with you that um, prior to the, the, sh the sh lockdown under uh, COVID, um, we did have uh, Grow and Gather. Uh, had funds available and, and had offered those. Uh, their question in part was, how do I get this done? And so we just weren't quite ready yet. So we could definitely go back to them. Uh, and there was uh, a salon uh, that was interested in, to your point of asking them, and they were both willing to pay for it. Uh, some of these folks, I think, um, when they heard the cost, uh, when I said, well, I, I think they're going to cost between six to seven thousand dollars. They, they kind of backed off a little bit, but um, I think we could go back to them and maybe even, you know, if everybody contributed along that row might be. So, Cheryl again? Uh, Tim's actually first. Oh, Tim? Oh, I was just gonna say that um, we did uh, hear back from Ennis, who is the manufacturer of the thermal plastic um, that would be applied on our design, which is, much more intricate and colorful. Um, and our cost would have been $4,400 just for our design. Plus the city would probably be 
fifteen to sixteen hundred for application. So you know, fifty nine hundred dollars. About. So I'm guessing, um, you know, once you get a quote on this from Ennis, that it'll be much lower than what uh, you had budgeted. So you might have room in your budget to do more than one. Great. Thank you, Cheryl. Yep. I was going to say something along the lines of what Tim shared. If we, if we, you know, sure, uh, include the hair salon and, and, and grow and gather. I think that's a perfect spot across uh, Old Hand and in front of grow and, grow and gather to help people know where it is and stop. Traffic's a little weird sometimes if you don't know where it is, even though there's a big sign. You know, it could be another pointer. But uh, I think in addition to those two, we can definitely buy based on the volume of of anticipated or prospective um, crosswalks, um, maybe get a different deal, um, a lowered price, some sure. money from somewhere else. Yeah. I don't want to say city council, but I, you know, I, I don't know. We can do more, I think. Um, but, and as, as our 1% comes in each year, I think we could surely budget, uh, you know, one a year as well, and maybe more or one is to help a little bit with that as well. So yeah, I think there's, a, to your point, there's a lot of opportunities that we can. And I think once people see these go in and the box, they're going to get really excited and maybe we can generate some more excitement and some more funds. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Uh, Christine Underhill, a director of Parks, um, Parks and Rec and Library is on the call, I know. Yep. Um, Christine, like way back when um, I had a thought of, uh attaching a crosswalk to to our parks uh crosswalk designed to align with the history of those parks since each of our parks or or a set of our englewood parks carries a significant history that used to be celebrated by some of the art in the parks so if the group of course i'm just a peripheral member now um but i'm even wondering since parks and rec is such a large entity um if some point down the line that might be something you're all interested in um just to celebrate our parks and more history and or whatever culture aligned with the parks which ties into the neighborhood program that we have going on just the celebration demarcation and um, recognition of neighborhoods within englewood christine if you want to say anything i'd love to hear your feedback yeah, i mean i think that's a great idea and as uh we go forward with potential redesign um, park renovations. It could be something we could definitely implement um, with the commission's help of coming up with that theme or that history and uh, move forward that way. So maybe as, as we renovate parks, it could be something that's actually implemented into the project itself. And maybe we could pick up the cost even um, as part of the park project. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Christine. Thank you, David. And hey, Christine, just to you know, as well, one, our first, you know, the first, uh, I guess, attempt of, of trying to move this forward, we were looking at, uh, we had another design that was close to Jason Park that um, had dog footprints in it because, uh, you know, Jason Park is kind of one of the, as you know, one of the um, official off-leash parks, and we thought it would represent um, you know, also looking at maybe representing that area for what it's known for as well. Because I know, I know people that um, all over Inglewood that drive their dogs to that park just so they can all play together and stuff. So yeah. we thought that as well as the history, uh, adding that kind of flavor to the neighborhood as well. So Sure, that's great. It was just, just an idea. All right. Um, so I don't know, is there any more comments on this crosswalk here? We still have to, as Tim said, get uh, ours um, costed out and how that would look. But um, if there's none, I will I will start and say I, I vote to move this forward as well. Mark? Yeah, I vote to move this forward. Leah Beth? I vote to move it forward. Martin? I vote to move it forward. And Clarice? Yes, I vote to move it forward. Sorry, could have hit the mute button. <laughs> yeah, all right, great. All right, guys. So uh, that's that was really the meat of our um, meeting today. Was just trying to get 
those uh, approved at least or have discussion and move that begin to move those forward. Um, the next step, um, Maria, I know, well, I would say, I know communications was going to be here. So uh, I guess we'll try to maybe Maria and you and I or Cheryl, I don't know, we'll try to move this forward to make, I don't know if Sean even wants to, or if he's just saying you guys approve them and we'll move them forward, how that works. But um, we'll try to all work together to see what the next steps are to get this going. Yeah, so I would say there's no council action required because this was basically, they approved the guidelines which said it was a staff approval once it got through the Cultural Arts Commission. So we should be able to move on this very quickly. Great, okay. Thanks everybody. Um, real quick, I guess we can go through the rest of the agenda, Debbie, does I probably need to get do that with new business, which we don't have. Staff's choice. Is anybody on staff? Christina, Mark, Maria, want to say anything? We're good. No, I, the, the direction you guys are going with this is great. In my previous position with a, a former city, we did traffic boxes and it changed the look of the city. And it was almost a placemaker. And I think that's what these are going to do. So I think it's great. And the designs are amazing. The crosswalks are going to be fun as those get implemented. People will actually come and find the crosswalks and take their pictures on them. We had a, in downtown Phoenix, they did a huge pride crosswalk to so the rainbow and uh, tons of people came out to get their picture taken on that crosswalk. It actually caused some traffic issues, but it was a destination. So I think we're doing just that in Inglewood. It's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. And, and we're hopeful, I think, you know, among the folks as well is maybe this will uh, encourage some traffic down back down into that area and help our boutique restaurants and retail as well. So at, as you had mentioned, if people are excited about it, maybe they'll come down not only to see that, but to spend, spend some money at our restaurants that we know have been um, struggling of late. Great. All right. Commission members, does anybody want to say anything? You guys good? Great. Tim? You want to announce uh, anything? You guys got your pivot opening, huh? Yeah, I'll just say that we reopened on Monday. Um, and it's, you know, going to be a little different, obviously. Um, we're actually using the Hampton Hall ticket box to, you know, protect our staff. Um, and so we're, we're allowing people to come in through Hampton Hall, which is a little different. But I think everybody's understanding of that. And... Uh, every day we've seen a little tick up in numbers. Um, it started out very slow, but um, Ray Rinaldi, the art critic for Denver Post, came in today and he'll put out an article and I think things will really pick up for summer. Um, but, you know, we have a great uh, timed ticket system in place and I think we're in a really good position for the current circumstances and it's very low touch. Um, and so, you know, I think you know, we, we vote to do well at this time and we'll just see what happens. <laughs> Great. Cheryl, did you, I don't know, do you, I guess you don't fall in staff and maybe your commission, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just want to thank the commission for, for continuing all your hard work and, and bringing the traffic cabinets and the crosswalks to where they are right now. I'm really excited um, for your progress. And um, a little fun anecdote, I was watching, watching something the other day, I don't remember what it was, but uh, the uh, actors were talking about art, they were going to some art shows in New York, and uh, they were super excited about Rauschenberg and talking about how many Rauschenbergs they owned, and I just got really excited. <laughs> like, I know who that is. <laughs> anyway, nothing else. Thanks for your hard work. Thanks. All right, guys, I'll let you go. We'll, we'll all take off and uh, go have dinner or whatever else. Thank you so much. I do think uh, we will actually, uh, I know if Tim has submitted some stuff, we'll, so we'll probably have a um, crosswalk, at least I think the crosswalk, Tim, was approved. I, and we can talk about the boxes too when those get approved. So we might have some more to do uh, at our next meeting as well. Great. We're gonna stay, we're gonna stay virtual, right? Debbie? Do you know? I th I'm guessing we are, right? 
at this point. We haven't heard otherwise. So, I mean, assume that it will stay virtual until you hear differently. Do you agree, Cheryl? Is, I mean, has council discussed anything? No, there's been no discussion about um, council or meeting again in person. I would imagine they'd make that decision before they would start calling on you all. I mean, at, at this point, it's really still as as is necessary. But uh, there is more. Oops. As I say that, I will say that um, some of our administrative team is has moved into the office. I don't know if Maria DeAndre, our director of uh, public works, wants to make a comment, but. I think a few more individuals than were on premises recently might be going in, probably on a limited basis, but no. I would say we stay virtual, and Maria, if you want to say anything, please do. Yeah, staff has been back in the Civic Center for a couple of weeks now. Um, it seems to be working really well. We're not at full staff, but probably within the next two weeks, probably around June 15th, we're looking at bringing all staff back. Um, but as far as we've heard, um, it's still, even the governor's direct direction that came out yesterday still limits people to no more than 10 in a group. So I would guess that we're still online, even though our facilities are opening up. Thanks, Great. Great. All right, if there's nothing else, thank you all. This is exciting. Thanks, thank David. Uh-huh. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Thank you all. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.